configuring name server, NIS name server and NIS client. So server can be of two types, master server and slave server, slave servers. Okay, so in an NIS domain, you can have one master server and more than one slave servers. Servers. Master server is only one. Okay? So what will master server contain? The centralized repository of all NIS maps. What is a map again? Name to number or number to name is a map. Reverse maps are stored separately, forward map are stored separately. Okay. So in a master server you will have name resolution for forward map as well as reverse map. In a slave server you will have replication, replication of this map. So that means today if I configure master server, where these maps are created from? from the etc files, correct? Now you may ask me, Sandeep, I want to treat NIS master server's local etc file separate than centralized files. Are you getting my point? Meaning, meaning the source, the source of username to user id is etc password. So if etc password has a user1 and your objective is to convert this user1 to user id via NIS, then this can be the source file, correct? But my objective is not that. My objective is I have two files, I have two user, user1 and user2. User1 let it be resoluted via NIS, user2 let it be do a local resolution. Did you get my question? Interesting. That means I don't want NIS database shared across the network as NIS server's local database. Is it clear? NIS server's local database is in the ETC folder of NIS server. So if I say my source file or my source of the map is etc directory of NIS master server and when I convert this etc directory files into NIS database files what will happen? Your etc directory of your NIS master is exposed to all the client. Agree with me? Or? So in that case NIS master servers own etc configuration are vulnerable to the clients and from the clients they can at least see they may not do anything but they can see so why you have to allow them to see also so what you can do is you can always say nis master servers source directory of the map is not etc source directory of the map is a directory of your own choice. So that means what will I do? I will copy all the required etc files from here to a directory of my own choice. Is it clear? And then I will update the make file and in the make file I will say my source dir is this. So as soon as you copy Example etc password to slash own slash password and I didn't want it user2 to be there user2 to be there so I will edit slash own slash password remove the user2 you getting the point? so once I remove the user2 what happens? user2 is there in the etc password but no local name resolution whereas slash own slash password user2 is not there because I don't want that user as the centralized user. I want that user only locally to be logged in. Is this clear? So this is just an example of a user account. It can be an ex it, this example you can take it for anything what you don't want 
to be centrally available with NIs. So on a NIs domain, you have a master server, you have a slave server, slave server gets copy of these maps from the master server and you have NIs clients and you have NIs clients. NIs clients are those machines which will not have any database. Will have a demand running upon request goes to either the master server or the slave server gets the repository into name to number or number to name as per requested by the clients. Is it clear? Keep in mind always an NIS master server or an NIS slave server is also a client of itself. So when it, is, it itself wants to do a name resolution, obviously it will also follow the same method as like another client is following. The request will not go via the network. The request will only go from one demand to another demand within the machine. Is it clear? Is that necessary? Which one? The server has to be, I mean, Vipipan has to be run on server also. Uh -huh. Vipipan has to be run on server also. Yes, if for example, let us take, let us take, uh, the server wants a name resolution. Server wants, server is doing ping to that. That machine is not there in the server's ETC host file. It is there in the server's NIS map. Then obviously, there should be somebody looking onto the NIS map, digging it and giving it the output to the server itself. Are you getting my point? So here is the here is the diagram. Nice diagram. Nice diagram. So what does it say? See this ASCII files. What is ASCII file? Your ETC password. Your ETC shadow is an ASCII file, etc host is an ASCII file. So the source of these NIS maps which will be there on the master server then being pushed to all the slave servers. These maps, these maps, they are generated from a ASCII files and is converted into maps via a utility called make, make utility. Make utility has a configuration called make file. That make file will now have the information where to pick up the source. So I was telling the source I don't want DTC, I want slash own. There where you have to make changes. Is it clear? So this is how the diagram is, very simple. This can be one slave or this can be multiple slave, but this cannot be multiple master servers. So the pushing is done as soon as a map is generated. Map is generated as soon as you run the make command from the source to the location called destination. So what will be the destination bus? Where YP domain, domain name suppose is sun.com inside that for password and shadow combination you will have a file called password.byname.page password.byuid.page password.byname.dir password.byuid.dir dir files are the index page files are the actual name to number number to name map. and once that is done then these maps are pushed to the similar location on the so you can see here they are given. There will be domain name. There are two types of files: dot page and dot di.
So in this example, have a look. In this example, training is the domain name. Have you seen that? Where IP domain name is training. Inside that you have host dot by name dot page. Host dot by address dot page. Have you seen that? By name is by name resolution. By address is by address resolution. <coughs> So the format is this. Now, once uh, let us take uh, uh, let us take the maps are created. So you have you have a file called where yp domain name hosts dot by name dot page hosts dot by address dot page now I want to see these files how will I see the contents of NIS maps so the command is yp cat followed by the name of the map is it clear so you will get the output with respect to the output from these files. Here they are given yp match. You know yp match is equivalent to grep. yp match is equivalent to grep. So if I say yp cat, cat space host pipe grep, pipe grep for a particular host name. So it's equivalent to doing a yp match match is nothing but your search so in an NIS domain what all you will have a master server a slave server and clients So what will master server contain? What is the prerequisite of master server? The prerequisite of master server is to have disk based source files, etc directory files or whatever. Files should be there to generate the map. They will contain, after map is generated, they will contain the centralized maps. Slave server, what does slave server contain? Slave server will not contain the source file of the maps slave server will contain a copy of the nice master's map which has come from the master after being pushed from the master to the slave can be used can be used in case master server is gone down can also be used in case if there are lot of clients slave servers are helping for load balancing purposes clients do not contain any copy of the maps do not have require any source files to create maps either can be bound to the master server or slave server generally rebinds to the slave server automatically in case the master has failed processes please see very interesting NIS processes. This file process what you see on the left hand side are all running on the master server. Are all running on the master server. Whereas on the slave server you have yp serve and yp bind. And on the client which is at the bottom is only yp bind. So what is the job of yp serve? I was telling you, right? Before the break I was telling you. What is the job of yp bind and yp serve? So it will serve the... yp bind is a request from the client side for any name resolution. yp serve is looking on to the NIS maps and giving the response to the yp bind request.